We now live in a time where Goku from the classic Dragon Ball is seen in a different light to the Goku in modern times. But what is it about Dragon Ball Z Goku that makes him so likeable? If you're returning, welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome to the channel. Subscribe for all of your Dragon Ball coverage, and if you do hit the like button on this video, thank you so much, I appreciate all of you. Speaking from the heart here in comparing Goku from classic times to modern, his character and journey towards Ultra Instinct in Dragon Ball Super doesn't feel quite the same as the days when I watched Dragon Ball Z on Toonami, where Goku trained to fight the Saiyans, traveled to Namek and became a Super Saiyan to go on and sacrifice his life against Cell, and so on. I thought maybe that I was looking back with nostalgia to the glorious days of my childhood when life in general was less stressful and more jolly. But after revisiting classic Dragon Ball in recent times, particularly the Z story and the movies, as they were the first Dragon Ball stories I got into years ago, I definitely had that clarification on why I fell in love with that classic Goku and don't feel attached in the same way to modern Goku. It has nothing to do with my age because if that was the case then I have no doubt I would gravitate towards an older Goku in modern times, one with more experience in life and a more mature attitude. But that isn't the case because with Z Goku, even before End of Z, I instantly gravitate towards him and why is that? Now don't get me wrong, I like aspects of all the Dragon Ball series, from the original Dragon Ball to Z to GT to Super, each with their own strengths and weaknesses in comparison to each other. Where the original Dragon Ball has that adventure style combined with martial arts tournaments, GT has the wiser Goku on his final journey through a story of consequence, and Super is Goku undertaking a training path in mastering himself with the god powers. But Dragon Ball Z is always going to be home for me as a fan of Dragon Ball and Goku in general because it feels like all of that that I just mentioned. Adventure, martial arts, constantly training to improve as well as being portrayed like he's becoming a wiser fighter along the way. And loving Dragon Ball Z the most may sound like a normie thing to say. But when it comes to normie things, I'm absolutely okay with that because it's not an accident that so many people love Dragon Ball Z and the Goku from that part of the story the most. Even if the Goku you grew up with felt more of a hero type in the dub you watched, like me, I had that experience too growing up, but even now when I watch Z and the movies in any language, the original or the English dub, Goku still feels like a hero to me. Not a cookie cutter superhero, but a hero. The guy who shows up on the battlefield and I think, yeah, this guy, Goku is him. He is going to sort you out. And I get that a lot with movie Goku. Some of my favorite Goku portrayals were from the movies. And I'm not a person that cares about canon because canon doesn't matter. Dragon Ball has multiple continuities and movie Goku is still Goku. I love that guy. When I see him, he is a guy I trust. There is something about him, even more than the original Z anime. Movie Goku is the man, you can count on him. So in this video, I'm going to spend some time talking about Z Goku and primarily focus on different moments of his journey in Z, but there may also be some moments of him throughout the rest of Dragon Ball. But either way, this video is a tribute to you, the Z Goku Squad. Well, my friend, it's as I've said before, it's not Goku's fault, it's the writer's fault. Specifically Akira Toriyama. Goku is a character that has meant a lot to myself and many for most of our lives in terms of how he motivated us through what he represented and how he carried himself against the obstacles in front of him. And to ultimately see him learn and grow from those experiences to becoming an even better Goku felt like I was winning with him. I've compiled a lot of classic intros and scenes with Goku in from old school Dragon Ball games in this video where I'm going to ask you to do one simple thing. When watching them, tell me if you feel the same about Goku and them compared to the Goku we've got now in Dragon Ball Super. When I refer to Dragon Ball Super Goku, I primarily talk about the anime version and the movies, specifically Superhero. But when it comes to the manga, I'm mostly referring to Goku in the Superhero arc, as the Goku before that in the manga was bearable and would at times show glimpses of that classic Goku in terms of his veteran nature as a martial arts warrior. But now I feel like even that's not enough to save him from what's happened. Because what I get from the old Goku is nothing but good feelings. But what I get now from watching modern Goku is an allergic reaction to bullshit. Remember, these are meant to be the end of Z Goku and Vegeta within a few months of the story. Do these guys even feel like the characters you saw during those final episodes of Z that look like they have hit their peak? What could they possibly do in the next few months of the story that could elevate them to that presence that they once had in their end of Z counterparts? The last thing I wanted was a bastardized version of Goku in the manga like the obnoxious pompous fool we had in the superhero movie and the Dragon Ball 
normal super anime. Manga Goku was actually the most likable version of Goku for me in the modern continuities of Dragon Ball Super. A version of Goku that continued to grow, but also showcased his life experience of being a long-term warrior when needed. Most of the time. Like when he narrated to the readers what Vegeta was doing with his advanced godly powers against Goku Black. In that situation, Trunks appeared as the learner, whereas Goku was portrayed rightfully as the expert. But now the circle of life is complete. The transition has been happening for a while now, slowly but surely, with each passing chapter. The classic Goku would get consumed by the darkness of modern writing until now it's fully manifested into its true form. A monkey who came here all the way from the circus to entertain you. The numbskull from legend, possessing a regressed brain and awakened by stupidity. Son Clanku, the stupid Saiyan. Because Goku of all characters has now been lowered to become the trunks when battle logistics are being explained. Huh? What's going on? that guy. With that constant stupid look of confusion on his face that never fails to annoy me. Because I know he was never like that. And I don't mean those expert next dimension precise godly techniques. We're talking about basic combat now. I don't know how many of you guys have noticed this, but when it comes to Goku in Dragon Ball Super, we actually no longer have the hero that thinks and talks to himself during critical moments of the story to understand the thought process of the main protagonist. The advantage of that is that it allows us, the reader, and even when we watch the original Z anime, to allow us to be close to Goku. He's sharing his most personal thoughts to us about the situation, and he's essentially there as a guide for us about what's being planned. Someone to feel connected with inside the mad world of Dragon Ball. Like when we were inside Goku's thoughts with what he was planning to do against Babidi and Boo. He felt like the character we were following. But in Dragon Ball Super, we actually don't get that at all, I don't think. We don't get Goku thinking or talking to himself like this. But instead, our hero is now portrayed as this inexperienced outsider to situations, rather than be the leading voice for the audience in the situation in assessing what's going on with his own wisdom and experience. Something so simple that is missing has made so much difference in how I see Goku in all of Dragon Ball Super now. Like, I don't want to follow this guy's lead at all anymore in Super. And I dare to think what he's even thinking about in Super. Can you imagine trying to process his thoughts into dialogue boxes in Super? It would look like a four-year-old writing their first sentence. I'm just completely detached from Goku now. Back in the original, I felt connected to him. When it comes to Goku, he no longer just simply acts oblivious to traditional Earthling customs in order to create cute, comedic moments in Dragon Ball, but instead, he has now become something that in order to get laughs and progress the god-awful plot, he's written to sacrifice the one key element of his character that made him the inspirational, successful role model Goku that we all fell in love with in the first place. His fight in skills, experience, wisdom, and the most important one, growth. If anybody tells you Goku doesn't change, they need to look at the bigger picture, not just some dialogue from a voice actress. Just read and watch the story, it's actually there right in front of you. Throughout the history of Dragon Ball, there's always been that young boy protagonist, whether it be Goku, Gohan, Goten, because Goten and Trunks are all grown up now, so the only qualified candidate in Dragon Ball Super that Toriyama doesn't mind trading all the skills in for, just so he can learn the exact same ones over and over again to give the illusion of progression, is none other than Goku. Let's turn this 40 year old ass clown's brain into a bowl of spew and have him wear that ridiculous puzzled face constantly as he questions everything about basic training and martial arts that ironically doesn't involve him fighting and training like a goddamn ape with no technical foundation whatsoever which are the key principles to Goku's growth as a martial artist in Z and early Super that separated him from the brainless brute nature of battle to begin with, similar to how Saiyan and Namek Saga characters fought. What the hell is even going on anymore? What the hell happened? But I would take any of these reasons I've mentioned and just run with it because they all lead to the same result. That being Goku has become an unsalvageable parody of what he was in Dragon Ball Z. If I'm perfectly honest, I love how Goku was meant to be this wild, cocky and selfish guy in obtaining his own goal with a kind, silly nature to go with it. But what I loved even more was seeing that version of Goku grow into a more mature Goku, being portrayed as a wiser man, a role model, someone to look up to, someone who could make mistakes and show progression by sorting them out, and someone who had a presence that made me feel this guy is experienced. He knows what he's doing. I can't wait to see what he's learned. The way Goku had been portrayed into this hero, especially through the English versions of Dragon Ball, was actually a success in my eyes. But the Goku most of us grew up with in the English version of Dragon Ball Z, heck, even the Dragon Ball GT Japanese dub, I'm sure for many of you, that was the Goku who we idolized and loved the most, and was the one who we will remember the most, for appearing like a leader, someone you can rely on. And before Super, Goku was never unintelligent. 
He always learned incredibly fast, and despite living in the woods at the start of his life, he became accustomed to social life and how the world works. He was uneducated, but was portrayed as intelligent in his own unique way. Goku in the Saiyan saga seemed smarter, more experienced, more responsible than Dragon Ball Super Goku. In Z, Goku would always look at the bigger picture in his decisions despite it coming off initially with no sense, like the idea of getting Gohan to go Super Saiyan 2, or placing his faith in Goten and Trunks to save the world. His efforts were always good spirited. Sometimes he would appear naive, but that was his flaw. That was him being too good hearted. It was good to see Goku have flaws. Look, I really enjoy the Team 4 Star Dragon Ball Z abridged, and I enjoy it as the comedy that it is. And that's what it was meant to be, is a comedy. It's a shame some actually extract the portrayal of those characters in Abridged and bring them over to actual Dragon Ball where they then start believing the actual characters are exactly like they are in Abridged. This is not Team 4 Stars doing, it's some idiotic fans who take it as canon when it's meant to be 100% comedy. We know Goku is as goofy as it comes. That's part of Goku, but that's what makes him awesome because when it does get serious, the guy knows or used to know what words to say, he would be fully aware of what's going on, and he would have the wisdom on what to do in certain situations most of the time. He would be compassionate when he needs to be, he would be wise when he needs to be, he would be just plain old fun and goofy when he needs to be. But as time went on, especially in Dragon Ball Z, you could see Goku maturing. When looking at these faces of Goku, the expression from the manga, that sort of disappointment of Goku's face, that's the most fitting for his character. It's that reflection, like everything's over, and it, it kind of incorporates Goku's character a lot in that moment, rather than just being this brainless monkey with this incredible amount of power now that he doesn't care about anything because that's not who Goku is. But the expression itself, in what we're talking about, that does capture who Goku actually is. I mean, like, if that was Vegeta, for instance, you can imagine him laughing it off, couldn't you, and just flying away. <laughs> with the concept of Super Saiyan back then with the rage, it felt like it had the potential to consume Goku. There was a scene in the anime, I can't remember if it's in the manga, but it was Master Roshi explaining that Goku is trying to hold on to the man he used to be. A power like that can change a man, and story-wise, it was poetry, where Frieza egging Goku Goku on, trying to get Goku to believe he's a monster just like himself, bloodthirsty like all the other Saiyans, but he's like, no, they paid for their crimes. And that's why I felt the whole Goku speech, that was why it was there, to solidify who Goku is and why he's different from the Saiyans, that he's not just this enraged warrior, but he's still got a good heart. It was like a crossroads for Goku, the Super Saiyan form, which path does he go down? He could have easily become a monster with that amount of power, no different to Frieza in his decision making, but Goku was able to stop that from happening, preventing the rage, making the decisions for him, and as the fight goes on, he's regaining that rationale of who he is. Because like all the dialogue with Goku saying to Frieza, you know, this time it's you who dies, I won't show you any mercy anymore. All that's pretty much early game in that Super Saiyan fight because like mid game, he's not saying things like that anymore. It's almost like Goku has fully overcome that rage and he has that control of the power now, I guess, his natural senses and decision making, if that makes sense. Whereas early game, he might've been saying all that stuff, may have not meant it. Perhaps the Super Saiyan rage instinctively wanted to kill Freezer based on what happened, but the internal conflict of Goku's rage and his actual self, his good heart itself, prevented that rage from taking control. Perhaps the form did have the most influence on Goku early game, making him say things like, you're gonna die, sort of like the bad habits of the form until he regained full rationale. That's why I really enjoyed the concept of the Super Saiyan back then, and like the tingly back we have now. But in terms of the comparison of the anime and manga, the facial expressions of Goku, I think the reason why I like the Mina look, the anime face at this moment of Freeze's defeat, because it felt like, to me, Goku was coming down from that rage. He was still in that mode of the angry Super Saiyan. The horrible things Frieza did, murder Dende, murder Krilla and tried to kill Gohan. Things I feel a lot of us would feel are unforgivable if they only happened five minutes ago in a life versus death space war. But considering those circumstances, even though the angrier face doesn't fit Goku's character fully like the others do, do you think Goku would still be justified being angry at that moment like he appears in the anime screenshot? When you think about that five minutes, it's such a short time for someone to experience the things Goku felt with the deaths and everything to, you know, not still be an angry five minutes after, I guess. I think it's that reflection part. Once the fight is over, that's what the facial expression means. You know, it's the disappointment. You know, everything is going through his mind at that. But like the goal is during the fight, isn't it? So if there was a point where Goku wanted to kill Freezer, I think the biggest chance would have been in the first minute of the fight where that rage has just kicked in. Goku didn't want to kill Freezer throughout that fight. He was trying to find any way to not kill him in a way. I think 
think he's written to be such a nice guy, the character in general, that even with that Super Saiyan rage, he was trying to find any way not to kill Freezer. But if he had to, you would have to do it. But it just shows that he didn't want to do it, if that makes sense. Despite how awesome the concept is, you know, the original Super Saiyan that we saw on Namek, the rage behind that conceptually, I think that's awesome. I'd love to have seen that played out a little bit more, the rage aspect of the Super Saiyan. But ultimately, because Goku's personality and character was that much stronger than Super Saiyan, I think it's clear and safe to say Goku never wanted to kill Frieza unless he was consumed by Super Saiyan. Particularly around the Cell Saga, Goku was the guy passing the torch to Gohan. Gohan had the power, but Goku had all the wisdom and experience upstairs. And he was trying to pass all this on to Gohan because Gohan had the power, but he lacked the mind. He was arrogant at times and even doubted himself. But Goku overcame all these issues through his combat experience, through his life. And he was trying to teach that to Gohan to believe in himself and all that. Even to overcome Gohan's own arrogance, Goku knew when it was time to kill Cell. Yes, Goku wanted to kill Cell off. It was urgent. Goku truly was the master. He was a martial arts master, but Gohan was the strongest. I mean, in combat with Cell, he was weaker, but he didn't make any mistake. He couldn't afford to make a mistake against Cell because he was weaker and Cell was just an insane being for Goku. But that's how much of a martial arts master he was. That's how wise he was in combat. That's how skillful he was. That's how much battle experience he had. And all that just disappeared, especially in modern Dragon Ball, to relearn the basics that he knew even during the Cell games, and even way before that, guys. When he arrived on Namek, you don't get much more of a badass Goku than that. So from there, how does it get worse for him? Because when he came back in the Buu Saga, Goku felt otherworldly. It's like when he died, he was the veteran. Then he's been to Otherworld for seven years, training with otherworldly beings. What has he learned? What training has he done? When he came back, he felt like he felt like a god of combat. That's the truth. He felt like someone who knew it all, done it all, and has learned even more somehow. So many tricks up his sleeve. That's the mysterious presence I felt with Goku in the Buu Saga, the one I respected. And again, he was still funny when he needed to be. Most of the time in the Granola arc, it doesn't feel like he's close to end of Z Goku. There are some moments like when he's doing his meditation to realize what his best Ultra Instinct is going to be. That's the direction they need to continuously go in. Not backtrack, then go forward, then backtrack again. Keep it consistent. Make Goku goofy, not the areas where it puts his combat knowledge, experience, and wisdom to the test. Because most of the time, they make him look like a jobber. And I know you guys understand where I'm coming from with that. The moment we saw Gohan, he was approximately four years old, four, maybe five. And in that five years, Goku was living a peaceful life, being a dad, being a husband. Gohan was healthy and life was peaceful for all three of them. So what happens next? Raditz shows up, and Goku being the good dad that he is, tries to save his son and puts his damn life on the line. So Goku returns, saves Gohan again, acts like a true hero. So a bit of time passes and Goku arrives like a hero again and beats the crap into most of the Ginyu Force and saves Gohan, along with the others. Goku is out of commission again on Namek, but when Goku arrives on the battlefield again, he instructs Gohan to stay back and not get involved, again showing his Kirin nature. Goku transforms into a Super Saiyan in a rage, and even with all this newfound rage, Goku found it in him to tell Gohan to get out of there, showing kindness and Kirin through an aggressive voice. But after the events of Namek, Goku ends up on planet Yardrat, and the time skip is approximately 1-2 to two years here. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure the dragon couldn't bring Goku back to Earth because Goku said no. Now let's weigh this up to see if it's a good or bad father decision. It's bad because he has a son to care for, but it's not bad because Goku knew he was going to return home eventually and the Gohan was in the care of Chi Chi, plus the remaining wishes could be used on the other Z warriors. It's a very caring decision if you think about it. And let's give Goku a little bit of respect here. He's just survived an exploding planet, turned into a Super Saiyan for the first time, wakes up amongst a new species of alien, and has recently just come back to life after being dead for a year protecting his son on the Earth. Let the guy have his vacation. Besides, learning instant transmission in this time period is not exactly a bad plot for the story. He uses it in the Cell arc later to save Gohan's life when Cell explodes. The payoff for this refusal to come back to Earth is well worth it. Before this time skip, Gohan has a little skirmish with Vegeta and really gets pissed at Vegeta for mocking his dad. Meaning at this point, Gohan feels strong about his dad and has a sense of pride for his father, showing a good relationship. 
But after this one to two year time skip, Goku arrives back on Earth and meets future Trunks, gets warned of the android invasion, and you can see Gohan is major happy to see Goku, and rightfully so. It's his dad, he's back! And then we get a three year time skip again, where in this time, Goku, Gohan and Piccolo have a lot of training time together. And all I have to say about this is, when Goku finally got three years to spend with Gohan, he did. Even though training was the majority of it, he spent it with Gohan at home and with Chi Chi. He's not really a bad father here if you ask me. Think about it, the entire circumstances of this android invasion is what is the problem. It's not Goku's problem, he's trying to balance everything be with his family and train. Because then Goku gets hit with a heart virus later on and as soon as Goku recovers, he's with Gohan again for nearly a year in the time chamber. Again, it's training, but it's not exactly like they can take a vacation with all hell breaking loose on the planet. They have to protect it, but spend quality time together as well. He's not a bad father. The circumstances are horrible for them and he's doing all he can in this situation and spending it with Gohan whenever he's available. Then we have the time of peace before the Cell games and Goku spends this time with Gohan and Chi Chi again, this time making sure that they relax and that training isn't a top priority in these 10 days or however long it was. This to me shows just how caring and thoughtful Goku is, that he wants to spend good time with Gohan and Chi Chi, even if it's just a small amount of time. That's a good father to me. It's almost like Goku knew he might not make it out of the Cell games alive and prioritized his family. Imagine Goku never knew Gohan had the power to beat Cell. That power never showcased itself. A bad father Goku would be him sending Gohan into battle knowing he can't win. That's a bad father. But the difference here is Goku knew Gohan could win. He would never have put Gohan in harm's way. He would never put Gohan in a circumstance where he knew Gohan couldn't win. He only did it because Goku believed and had confirmation in the Room of Spirit and Time that Gohan could win. That's why he wanted Gohan to fight. And that doesn't sound like a bad decision. Look at his face when Piccolo told him he made a mistake because Gohan's just a kid. The disbelief in Goku's face made him realize he's been thinking with his fists rather than his heart. And he soon turned to Krillin for a Senzu Bean to fight again. That to me showed that Goku can see both sides and is able to show care. The reason why I believe Goku gave Cell a Senzu Bean was because he knew Gohan would still have the power to beat him. He was confident. If Gohan couldn't win, he wouldn't have done that. And we're not just talking about a small power gap between Goku and Gohan, guys. Gohan's true power was absolutely ridiculous compared to Goku at this point. And he was right all along. Yes, Goku was right. If his power wasn't that high, I don't think Goku would have ever made that decision. He is not a bad father. He had his reasons, albeit a very methodical one. We could say that him giving Cell the Sensu Bean ensured that there would be more chance of Gohan getting backed into a corner, angry to unleash the power, where if the fight was fresh Gohan versus worn down Cell, the unleashed power may not occur in drastic circumstances. Goku ultimately cares about Gohan being a scholar or scientist. In the anime, and I believe manga, he brings up that once Cell is defeated, he should go continue following his dreams. Goku knew deep down that Gohan also had the passion for defeating evil and protecting all that is good. So why would Goku not consider Gohan, with his far superior power, to be the one to end evil once and for all? But we find out that Goku has to sacrifice himself for the planet in order to stop Cell blowing it to pieces. Goku's speech to Gohan, wow, what an emotional moment. Goku's sacrifice showed me just who Goku was as a person and character. He always spent time with Gohan when he had the chance to, even if it was training time. Life had been pretty shitty for everyone up until that point. It's not like these guys can have a peaceful life and not act when evil shows up. Goku dies and tells Gohan to look after Chi Chi, and to me, Goku saw Gohan was his successor. He did what he could for the planet, thinking he was the cause of evil showing up all of the time. It was a good intention to keep everyone else safe, including his son. Goku could have been wished back somehow and been with Gohan for seven years. Yes, I totally agree, but there was a reason strong enough for him not to. If Goku was the cause of evil showing up, by him not coming back it allowed Gohan for seven years to live in peace, get an education and progress his own personal life. And into the Buu saga, Goku comes back for a day, but even during this time back, Gohan is sad he can't spend time with Goku because of all hell breaking loose again. They care about each other. He cares about Goku. And the moment I could see how much Goku meant to Gohan was when Gohan hugged Goku in the Kaioshin realm just before coming back to Earth. 
You could see that moment between them. There was love. Father and son love. It's like, at this point in the series, the end of the Bu arc, people need to understand that Goku probably sees Gohan as his own man now. Gohan made it. He's got his whole life ahead of him. And Goku spent time with Gohan as much as he could when there was chance to. We even saw, after the 10-year time skip, Goku is with Goten training. Goku is a good dad. He spends time with his children. They are a fighting family. Martial arts. We must expect them to be training in their spare time. Anyway, guys, I'm not going to go into Dragon Ball Super that much. But all I'm going to say is that by that point, Gohan is his own man. He's got his own life and his own child and is perfectly healthy. His upbringing wasn't straightforward, but let's be honest, whose childhood is. Based on everything that's happened in Dragon Ball, Goku is a good father. He's not a perfect father, hell, far from it. He's not a bad father, you could say an average father, but I think his heart is in the right place. At times in Dragon Ball Z, Goku's gi appears red and orange, and it has left some fans confused as to why this has occurred. Is it really different coloured gi, or is there something else going on here? I've always believed Goku's gi was intended to be like a yellowish orange, similar to Shaolin Monks. However, in the anime of Dragon Ball, Goku's gi is coloured red sometimes. In an interview with Akira Toriyama in Dragon Ball Chogashu, the Super Art Collection, the question was asked, How did you decide on the colouring of costumes, such as the main character's clothes? And Akira goes on about it being naturally the colour of the robes of the Chinese monks. And the fact that it became red in the anime was always something he was dissatisfied with. So straight away we are homing in on the anime of Dragon Ball changing the initial plan of Akira Toriyama planning to have it orange. In the early Dragon Ball Z releases, the gear is seen as red. But in Dragon Ball Kai's version, it's clearly orange. As well as in many video game adaptions as well, during the same arcs. Between the dialogue of Gohan and Kabito, Gohan always says orange when referring to Goku's gi. A quote from an interested forum I found regarding the gi says, In terms of the original TV series, it totally depends on the level of saturation or hue on a particular release. The orange bricks and Dragon Ball boxes tend to have yellow, pink and green tints, which make it appear orange. On older pre-Dragon Box releases, broadcasts, it usually looks red. Funny's 97 to 2006 Digi Beta releases in particular had a lot of saturation, which naturally made all the colours seem more reddish. And that could be it right there. Sometimes Goku's gi appears more of a yellow orange when he's a Super Saiyan, but that's to make the aura spice up the uniform with its glow effect, showcasing the Super Saiyan power, like a light source. Also, like the Kaioken, Goku's gi appears more red because of the Kaioken aura. One of the more subtle changes from Dragon Ball to Dragon Ball Z is the shift in colour palette, such as the Turtle School uniform. In Dragon Ball, Goku's gi is fairly reddish. It has orange influences, but more often than not, it's red. But in Z, it's undeniably orange. In the manga, Goku's turtle school gi is yellow-orange for the entire series. The red uniform was a Toei-mandated colouring, but sometimes it appears more red to me. It just wouldn't make sense, especially if Toriyama was really dissatisfied with it not being orange like the monks. But now moving on to the colours of the gi in general. The orange gi I always found to be very outgoing, expressing energy, and symbolised Goku and how passionate he was about ever improving. Whether it's yellow-orange in the manga, or the anime's darker red, this gi makes Goku appealing and stands out. There are tons of information sources out there about the gi symbols and who they represent, but it's pretty much obvious. A new master, a new logo, which include Master Roshis and King Kai's. But when he arrives on Namek, the new symbol represents Go, and represents Goku, a Saiyan from Earth who has begun his own journey as a martial artist. But Goku ditches all logos in the Cell Saga, and continues through his own journey as a martial artist. It's a very simple gi, and totally suits Goku. Now the reason why I'm in love with Goku's blue gi, at the end of Z, showcases Goku's development as a character. His clothes explain who Goku is and where he is in life. The blue symbolized Goku as a teacher, a master of martial arts, calmness, wisdom, and accepting his age in life with peace. It symbolized his future rather than his past. And I know this one is a favorite in the community, but was very short-lived. In the manga, it appears more of a tealish green. GT Goku's gi also fits similarly into this with his blue gi and yellowish bottoms again for a more wiser Goku, and we can see that in the adult version, although the kid version is very iconic and a fantastic gi. In Dragon Ball Super, I really liked the chop and change of the one gi has with Whis's logo, it just broke things up a little bit for how we see Goku, 
but when Goku sports his more popular gi with the Go symbol yet again, it just made me sick of seeing it personally. There are some various cool outfits Goku wears, but not necessarily full-time battle outfits. These include the Saiyan armor, Goku donned that during the Cell Saga. Despite it looking awesome with him as a Super Saiyan, this doesn't suit him that much or his visual identity because Vegeta and Trunks both use it excessively. Then you've got the Yardrat outfit, and that's totally a favourite. Definitely short-lived. So much love for this one and gives Goku this mysterious look to him. And there you have it, the secret behind Goku's red or orange gi. It was definitely orange. But I thank you very much for watching all the way through, because that proves something to me. That proves that you care about the character of Goku in some shape or form. So hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, hit the dislike if you didn't, it's as simple as that. But whether you agree or disagree, share your comments below, I'll try my best to read as many as I can. So until we meet again, keep being a role model.